Hello everyone. You know, it's been quite rainy here in Korea this year. It's probably the wettest that I've seen since coming to Korea. There's been a couple of years where there was floods and heavy rains, some mudslides, but I don't remember it ever raining this much. So as you can imagine, I haven't been able to go cycling as much as I would have liked. So last Monday I took the day off work and I decided I'm going to go for a bike ride. I decided to go on a short ride to Buya. On the way to Buya, I took the car roads. There was a lot of really dark clouds to the north, but I didn't really get much rain. Right as I got into Buya, it started to pour. It started to rain a lot. So at first I hid underneath a bridge, which was okay for a minute, but you could see it wasn't going to stop and it didn't stop raining until I got back home. I decided just continue on. Uh, I got back on my bike. I turned around and I decided to take the bike path back. Now I knew that the bike path was probably going to have some flooding, probably some mud. It wouldn't be the easiest, but you know, it's still safer than taking the road. Uh, I started cycling back on the bike path and I got to one of the bridges. The bike path is a lot lower than the car roads and the bridges that cross the streams, they're even lower than that. So I got to one bridge and it was flooded. You could see that there was uh, a lot of water. You could still see where the bridge was because of the, the posts that were beside and I knew about how deep it would be, or at least I thought so. I just continued cycling uh, into the bridge, into the water, and it started getting deeper and deeper and deeper until it came up to like the top bar on my bicycle. That's also where my bags are. And I thought I shouldn't get the bags wet. So I stopped, I got off, and I put the, the bike up on my shoulder and I, I started walking across the bridge and the water kept getting higher and higher and higher and eventually it got up to my chest and I just had the bike above me. I made it through. I thought, okay, that was bad. There was also a lot of mud while well, I made it through. So I, I decided to continue and my next opportunity, I would get back up onto the road. Now I did save everything that was in my bags, but I forgot that I had my phone in my back pocket. So on a jersey like this, there's pockets in the back. It's just because when you're cycling, you're down like this. It's not really good to have it in your pant pocket, so, but on your back, it's okay. So I had my phone in the back pocket and then uh, one earphone and I said it went up to my chest, which meant that my phone was completely in the water and I forgot about it and then it stopped. Not much I could do. I turned off my phone, I put it in my bag, and I decided to continue on, continuing to look up at the road, trying to find a spot to get back on. So I was cycling, the mud started coming off. I was feeling okay. I mean, I was very wet, but once you're wet, you're wet. There's not much you can do, so you just continue cycling. And I came to another flooded bridge. This time I got off immediately and decided to try walking across. Again, the water got deeper and deeper. But this time it only got up to my waist. I made it to the other side, a little bit dirty, a little bit wet. Not too cold because it is August. Uh, I continued on and I did find a way back onto the road and I made it home. My phone did turn back on, but the touch screen didn't work anymore. Now the phone is like five or six years old, so it's probably time to get a new one anyways. So I went out and I did uh, get a new phone. So that got me thinking about ways to describe rain. There's many different ways to describe rain in English, and I thought I'd just go through some of them. Originally, I wanted to talk about the story behind It's Raining Cats and Dogs. It's Raining Cats and Dogs is one of my favorite idioms because I knew the story behind it. It's an interesting story, 
But as I did my research for this, I realized that we don't actually know what the real story is. The story that I heard is that a long time ago, cats and dogs used to live in the thatch roof houses and they would hide under there. But when it started to rain, the rain would get into the roof, they would get scared and they would jump out. So it was like it was raining cats and dogs. If you think about it, it doesn't make sense because why would they jump from somewhere a little bit wet to go somewhere that's very wet? Apparently this is probably not where the story came from. The idiom might have also come from in those old times, the roadkill removal system wasn't that good. A lot of times they left the, the dead mice, cats and dogs kind of in the gutter. And when it rained, the gutters would clean out and there would be cats and dogs floating down. So that's another idea of where the idiom might have come from. There's a number of other possibilities of where the phrase came from. It could have come from even Greek origins could have been talking about pole cats instead of the cats that we know. Uh, there's also an idea that maybe the, the sound of cats and dogs fighting is kind of like a, a storm or something very intense. So we don't actually know where the phrase it's raining cats and dogs comes from, but it's an interesting and a useful phrase that you, you hear rather commonly. Now there are other ways to describe rain, and I thought I'd go through a checklist of some of them. We'll start with just, just a little bit of rain, just a little bit. We call that a mist. So mist, like from a bottle, you square goes a fine, very small bits of rain, kind of like a cloud. That would be a mist. So it's misty outside. There is a mist. A little bit more than that, the raindrops get a little bit bigger and it comes down. We call that a sprinkle, kind of like putting a little bit of sugar, you can sprinkle it on. So it's sprinkling outside. Now a little bit more than a sprinkle is a drizzle. So it's, it's again, it's not much rain. It's just a very little bit amount of rain. <laughs> Spitting. Uh, so if it's kind of like big drops, it's kind of coming down like that, we call that spitting. After spitting, I have shower. And there's a lot of different showers and you can see why someone would call it a shower. It's like taking a shower. So there could be a light shower or a heavy shower. A light shower meaning less rain, heavy shower meaning more rain. A sun shower is when it's raining but the sun is out. And there's also the old phrase, April showers bring May flowers. There's a lot of rain in the springtime and the rain of course helps plants to grow. The phrase probably came from England. The rain from early spring is what produces flowers in May. Another way to say rain is just rainy. Be a rainy day. It's rainy outside or it's raining. It's pouring is when it's raining a lot. So a heavier rain. There's a rhyme that goes, it's raining, it's pouring. The old man is snoring. He bumped his head on the foot of the bed and couldn't get up in the morning. Sounds kind of dark actually. You might also hear someone say, ooh, it's really coming down out there. Or you might also hear it's coming down in buckets. So like a, a pail, a bucket of water just coming down really fast, like pouring buckets on buckets on buckets. Then I would say maybe downpour would be next. So a downpour is a very heavy rain for a shorter period of time. And then I'd probably put it's raining cats and dogs somewhere in here. There's also rainstorms, so you can say it's stormy. Another one you might hear is drenching. So drenched, kind of how I was after going through the water, drenched is just completely wet. You might hear it's a drencher outside or there's a drenching rain. You could also say I'm drenched to describe being completely wet. So those are some different ways to say it's raining. Maybe you can use these to say it's raining, but in a more interesting way. Anyways, try to stay dry and I'll talk to you next time.